Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details with the world's most ridiculous concourse preparation detail on my very own 2010 Ford Focus RS. It's proved far too time consuming to do this entire process within one video, so welcome to the first part in this new detailing series. Be sure to hit the like button to show a bit of support and make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss plenty more videos like this. Like always the vehicle needs to be washed as part of the basic preparation stages before further work can commence. The wheels are being taken off later on in the detail so I'm not too fussed about giving them a proper contact clean at this moment. An initial pre-rinse to begin with including the wheels, bodywork and arches is going to remove the loose bits of contamination. I'm using a Kranzel K7 jet wash with a Mosmatic gun and I've got to say it's far more enjoyable and convenient to work with over the standard Kranzel offering. Nothing too drastic in terms of rinsing the vehicle down, so the next step was to apply a pre-wash to the bodywork and iron fallout remover to the wheels. I don't currently have a snow foam attachment that works with this Mosmatic gun, so I simply applied some multi-purpose cleaner by hand. Due to this being my own vehicle and the fact that I have gathered quite a vast selection of detailing supplies from random companies sending me stuff out, I have decided that with this detail I am going to use up as much of it as I can. I was planning on doing separate product review videos for each of these products, but considering that those types of videos get very little views, I've opted against it. One of those products is called Shiny Source, which is essentially a multi-purpose cleaner and I've got 2 litres of the stuff to fire at the focus. Call it the snow foam stage or the pre-wash stage, because this stuff will do the exact same job. After both products were allowed to dwell for around 10 minutes, the complete exterior was rinsed down. All of the loose contamination was removed with it, which is going to help with making our contact wash far safer. The condition of the Focus's paintwork isn't the best and it is pretty badly swirled. It's covered in overspray, tar deposits, iron fallout, random deep scratches, blemishes, bird etching, bug etching and sanding marks amongst many other types of contamination and paintwork imperfections. Sam's detailing shampoo is going to be used to wash the bodywork and a microfiber madness in credit wash mitt. All higher up sections are cleaned first because obviously most of the dirt is towards the bottom. The key with washing a vehicle at this point prior to carrying out any further decontamination work is that with each stage from now on going forwards provided that you do it properly is going to make your following stages easier. We spent a good hour giving the vehicle its initial wash before swapping over to our secondary wash mitts to clean all lower down areas. I don't want a single piece of dirt or dust left on the car after this wash is finished.
with the RS respectably cleaned, the complete exterior is rinsed down. If you've ever watched one of my other multi-part detailing series before, then you may notice that I do actually carry out a few extra stages whilst doing my own car. To put this into context, then in short, the Focus has a non-time restricting budget and I've quite simply got two weeks to get it looking as good as I physically can. When you are doing customers' vehicles, and I've only ever been told once, Joe, I don't care what the cost is, I want you to get it looking at its absolute best and then let me know the price afterwards. Most customers will have a set budget in mind or a certain figure that they don't want you to go over, which is very understandable. The type of detail that I'm doing in this multi-part detailing series is on a completely different level to what I've ever done before and if you do watch the entire thing, then you will see why. Detailing is a highly competitive market, no matter where you are and as a professional business, you have to stay profitable whilst ensuring that you keep landing the jobs. If I were to quote for this level of detail with every customer, I'd be out of business within a month. Please consider the Focus RS detailing series of the pinnacle of car care to show you what can be achieved because you won't find any better anywhere else. With the Focus washed and rinsed down, the exterior was briefly blown dry to remove all standing water. By doing this is going to allow the first decontamination chemical to work more effectively on the paintwork. The Gravitas heated air blower is an incredibly good piece of kit and excellent value for money. After the blow drying stage, a tar and glue remover was applied to one or two panels at a time and then wiped over with a few microfiber towels. Due to the car being 10 years old with 70k on the clock and the fact that it's never been owned by a detailing enthusiast required me to give each panel two hits with the product just to make sure that all of the tar deposits were completely removed. The tar remover stage was carried out with an incredible amount of precision because every last surface, whether it be metal, paintwork, rubber, plastic, glass or fabric, are going to be either enhanced and corrected and will all be protected. After the incredibly thorough tar deposit removal stage, the exterior was fully rinsed down to remove all final product residue. The next decontamination stage is the iron fallout stage whereby you apply a product called iron fallout remover to the complete exterior. Windows, glass, paintwork, plastic and rubber literally everywhere. This product over the next 10 minutes is going to dissolve every last trace of ferrous or metal contamination. Believe it or not, the focus was heavily contaminated and this was made obvious by the red puddles forming on the floor. Unfortunately, due to the light drawing in at the end of day one and the fact that the car is of a deep metallic blue colour, it isn't all that noticeable in the footage. Apply the iron fallout product to the complete exterior and allow it to dwell for as long as possible. I use roughly one litre of built amber Corosol, which is usually the going rate for most cars. At this point, I was literally spraying 10 quid at the car to rinse it all off in 10 minutes time. Before any paint restoration work goes down, then it is absolutely vital to get the car completely free of all types of contamination. If you machine polish a car or even worse, wet sand a car that still has bonded contamination to the surface, then that contamination is going to become unstuck and will embed itself into your polishing, compounding or sanding pads and will leave noticeable marks in the clear coat, so make sure to decontaminate thoroughly. After the 10 minute dwell the iron fallout product was rinsed and I do need to warn you that in order to remove all of the iron contaminated residue it does take quite a while to rinse. Do it thoroughly or else you will find yourself with contaminated residue dripping from the gaps and crevices. After this initial rinse we applied another layer of shiny sauce to essentially act as a pre-wash. This is going to help draw out all of the iron fallout contamination and the product residue from those harder to get to areas. If you don't follow the iron fallout stage with a rinse, snow foam and then rinse again stage, then you will find yourself with those red contaminated drips. 
After the wet work was finished, the focus was brought inside the unit for the final decontamination stage. The clay bar stage is a fine piece of automotive clay, kind of similar to putty or play doh, it's just a little firmer. Maguire's last touch detail spray was used to act as the clay loop, and every last clear coated surface was clayed with military like precision. When the final decon stage was finished, the exterior was dried with a big and fluffy microfiber towel and the Gravitas heated air blower. When we do finally put the detailing tape on to protect the plastic and rubber seals and bits of trim, the tape won't stick unless the areas have been properly dried. At the end of day one, we managed to fully wash and decontaminate the focus and the first task the next morning was to defog the interior. Since the age of 17, I would always buy the Black Ice Magic Tree Air Fresheners, but since being in business for the past seven years, I haven't bought one. I now have my very own JP Details Air Fresheners, which are available to purchase on the online store. Considering that the doors on the Focus are going to be permanently closed for the next two weeks made the ideal opportunity to bang this funky little memory teasing odour bomb into the interior. As soon as I released the trigger I had memories from being a 17 year old lad with his first car come flooding back, a true memory of when I first ever got into car care some 13 years ago. The next stage is taping off all plastic and rubber trim and everywhere that isn't to be wet sanded. I must have used at least three rolls of the 3M tape to cover these areas which is a vital preparation stage before the next process can begin. I grabbed some brown paper from the guys next door at Rab Autos and set about masking off the windscreen, side windows, rear window, spoiler, the rear diffuser and the front mouth section. The gloss black trim isn't being wet sanded so these areas need to be temporarily sectioned off. Whilst wet sanding the paintwork with an orbital sander, the amount of product splatter is pretty bad. Therefore, masking off these areas is going to make my life easier in the cleaning up process. A Stanley knife was used incredibly carefully to trim the brown sheets of paper to the correct size and they were then taped in for quite a satisfying finish. The old and faded RS badge at the back of the car is being replaced and it needs to be paint corrected and polished underneath. The badge was heated up with a hot air gun and a bit of fisherman's wire was used to separate the badge from the car. A bit of tar and glue remover removed the last of the glue residue and the area was then cleaned with detail spray to neutralise the strong glue residue chemical. The same with the registration plate which needs to come off and unfortunately for me it's held on with quite a substantial amount of neatly applied sticky tape. The plate was heated up with the hot air gun and I was finally able to get it off the car. The glue residue was fully removed with the tar and glue remover and the area was then given a light clean with detail spray to neutralise the strong chemical. 
I opted to give the Performance Blue paintwork a wipe down with IPA, two remove all previous polish residue detail sprays and any gloss or wax enhancers from previous half arse valeting or detailing jobs. I want to inspect the true condition of the paintwork prior to wet sanding and then when the wet sanding does commence there won't be any potential product residue present of any kind. I've owned the car for 10 months and the only products that I've used are the basic shampoos, detail sprays and spray waxes. Nothing too major for the IPA to remove and whilst doing this stage I could feel that the paintwork was becoming a noticeably catchier after the IPA. Meguiar's last touch spray detailer does leave the surface slip but now that it's removed wet sanding can almost begin. A crucial stage before wet sanding or even paint correcting or compounding can begin is to check the depth of the paint in random areas across the entire vehicle. This is going to let you know if any areas have been re-sprayed and if they are too thin to make compounding or wet sanding too risky then you're going to know about it. Generally speaking then anything below 60 microns would be a serious concern and anything below 90 then you'll have to take extra care. Fortunately for me, and we will come back to these paint depth readings to see how much of the clear coat has been reduced after the wet sanding, but as it seems, the Focus's paintwork is going to be A-OK -okay to fully restore. There are a few areas that have been repainted, but by the looks it does seem to have been done to a decent standard, and there is plenty of paint and clear coat to work with, i.e. the bonnet, the front wings and the front bumper. Before wet sanding begins is the ideal opportunity to address any stone chips or flaky bits of paint. If we touch these numerous stone chips up now, then they can be wet sanded at the same time as the bodywork to flatten them back out to the same level as the car. I've got a Dr. Colour Chip Touch Up Kit in Performance Blue and I spent a couple of hours addressing all areas of paint with stone chips or even flaky bits of paint around the arches. It is a 10 year old car and it has done 70,000 miles so there were obviously a few to contend with. The arches themselves are solid and there is only one minor piece of bubbling on the inside of the driver's side rear wheel arch. Hopefully with these chips being touched up, re-lacquered and eventually ceramic coated is going to prolong these areas to any further wear and to make sure that they don't stand out. With all preparation work finally completed, before we crack on with wet sanding, let's take a look at the condition of the paintwork. We have the usual swirl marks, the odd heaviest scratch, random blemishes, ingrained bug etching and bird droppings. Holograms, random sanding marks and to be completely honest we do find ourselves with a full set of paintwork defects to sort out. Not forgetting a car covered in pretty bad wavy orange peel. The car is being prepared to as close to a concourse standard as physically possible, or at the very least, the ultimate show car standard. It is also a track prepared example, which makes it two different disciplines at both ends of the spectrum. One of the reasons why I bought this particular example was the fact that the car is mechanically sound and it does have a full service history with all service items carried out when they needed to be done. The mileage was bang on for what I was looking for, sub 70k, and of course, the price was right. The only thing that this car has been in desperate need of is for a detailer to come in and literally detail it from the tyres up, so that's what we'll be doing. As always, thank you for watching, please like the video to show a bit of support and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because we are now over halfway to 100k. There's plenty more videos inbound on the Focus, including the complete concourse preparation detail, so stay tuned for lots more obsessive car cleaning content. Feel free to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, just search JP Details and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.